Today we're going to be talking about 10 beat making tips that have changed the way that I make beats as well as the way that I produce for other artists. My name is Kelton Hutt and welcome to the Wavebenders YouTube channel. This is a place where you can come to learn things about music itself, about the entire music creation process and music production. My background is in music technology and I actually spent my undergraduate time learning about composition and music technology and went on to study more at Berklee College of Music about music production. From there I went to write music for television shows on channels like Lifetime and even got my music to some big artists as well for placements. And these 10 beat making tips are things that I've learned in my actual studies of undergraduate and graduate as well as real in the world experiences. So my my first tip is to learn the basics of music theory. This has quickly become one of the things that we argue about a lot in the beat making world and producing world is like, is it actually necessary to actually learn music theory? In my career, I've taken up to four plus levels of music theory, and I could tell you firsthand that it's not necessary to know every single thing for the producing or beat making process. If you're someone who just wants to focus on being a beat maker, the main three things you need to understand are scales, chords, and rhythm. Tip two is to stop searching for sounds. We spend a whole lot of time trying to find the perfect sound that matches kind of what we think is in our head but in that process of trying to search for that sound we really lose some of the creativity or maybe the initial idea that we wanted so my recommendation is to really just get the idea down so if you have a melody in your head just click down the melody on a basic piano synth whatever and go back and find the sound that you really want later on you can lay down things like reverb delay whatever on top of it to really get a feel for it but this way you don't lose the initial idea tip three is to develop a sound palette so this method is something that I've kind of taken from studying for a film composing and television shows as well what we were taught when you're looking at a TV show or a film in the composing mindset is to develop a certain sound or style that fits that show or film. So if you've ever seen Stranger Things before, they have a really 80s sound to it, and that's because of the actual era of the show. So they do things like focus on the actual synthesizers as well as 80s sounding drums to really match the show. By choosing things that match the TV show, the film, even the song that you're working on, it helps you to really cut down on things that you know won't be a fit. Tip four is listen to your genre the least. Now I'm not telling you to stop listening to your favorite genre that you produce, if that's hip hop, that's pop that's whatever but I think you should spend more time listening to other genres to really see what's out there a great way to stay fresh with ideas and melodies and even sound selection is to listen to other genres that aren't really in your style for example if you remember the Astroworld album Tame Impala actually helped produce a track on that album for Travis Scott this was a fantastic move by Travis Scott because it really created a song of something that you really hadn't heard before something so new and so different that sounded really fresh to the genre of hip-hop tip five is to get feedback on your beats this one's super cliche but it really does help to actually get an understanding of what people may like about your beats, what people may not like about it, and where there's room to improve on. Tip six is to join a beat making community. So something that I find super underrated is actually finding a community of folks that are creators like you and your genre and your style, even just beat makers in general. It really helps to motivate you and keep you kind of going with new ideas and fresh information. You can probably find beat making or music creator groups within your city somewhere, but if not, you can probably start one or just find a Facebook group that has one already. The reason I recommend this tip is because beat making or music creation in general is a super lonely process. So by joining a group or a community, it helps to really motivate you a little bit. Tip seven is to build with an artist. This one I find the most underrated because it really is something that helps make you a better beat maker, a producer, whatever, but it really is the key to blowing up as a creator as well. When I think of building with other artists, I think about people like Timbaland and Missy Elliott, Dr. Dre and like the entire NWA group and the list goes on. And really that's the entire idea is to really create something that's unique, but more so find someone that you feel like you align with in terms terms of creativity, in terms of influences, that you can really build a sound around and really create something unique and powerful and influential to the world. Number eight is to find ways to keep yourself motivated. Creating music is a super frustrating, a super lonely, and super really daunting task sometimes. For a period of time, music wasn't fun for me anymore, so I actually had to take a step back for a few months or so to actually figure out if this is what I wanted to do, um, if I had just lost my love for music in general, but it just became sort of more daunting and not fun anymore. Something that I actually started doing to make it a little bit more fun and motivating was I actually went to a local record shop a lot of times on Wednesdays or Thursdays to see if I could find a new record that was really inspiring to me and then later sampling it as well. It was a, a fun process that made me feel kind of closer to the music creation. Tip number nine, I actually recommend remixing songs. The process of remixing a song is super fun, first of all, but it's also a really educational way to actually learn more about producing for artists or even beat making in general. In a lot of the classes that I teach, remixing is actually a part of that process on a weekly or a bi-weekly basis. And it's because it teaches you a few things 
things. So by picking the song apart with those things, you have a better understanding of how it was put together, first of all. But how to do things like accentuate or match it, bring some maybe new ideas to the table too. And number 10 is the biggest cliche of all, but it's believe in yourself. One of the things that holds us back as creators of music a lot of times is the failure to believe in our music itself. We don't always market it the best that we can because we don't believe in it. We don't always create the best that we can or we always try to overdo things because we feel insecure about the music or whatever. But it all stems from not really believing in ourselves or believing in the music that we create. Because having confidence in your music and believing that your song is good and believing that the music that you create is great really helps me to perceive it better as well. If we were to show it to an artist and not have confidence that it's great, they probably won't think it's that great as well. So have confidence in yourself, the music you create, and continue creating that sound that you believe is good. So those are my 10 beat making tips for you, and I hope they actually change and help your process as well. Please make sure to come back to Wavebenders Music for more tips. We're gonna have one on music theory soon as well, breaking it down for beat makers. So please make sure to tune in and subscribe for more.